Step into the old days of the Wild West with a famous TV series about a bounty hunter. This show follows his adventures in the tough terrain of the frontier. But did you know there are many interesting facts about this series? Keep reading to discover them. Do you have any little known facts or stories about this TV show that you find fascinating? What qualities do you think make this series a lasting symbol of the entertainment industry? Share your favorite memory or personal experience related to this show in the comments below. We're excited to hear from you. In the late 1950s, a television series emerged that changed the way people viewed westerns. It featured a bounty hunter as its protagonist, portrayed by a talented actor who brought the character to life with his acting skills. The show wasn't just another cowboy tale, it delved into themes like justice, morality, and survival in the Old West, making it a hit among viewers. The actor's portrayal of the bounty hunter became iconic, with his rugged charm and strong moral compass captivating audiences. The series' success lay in its ability to transport viewers to the Wild West while presenting a relatable and compelling main character. The protagonist's unique methods of dealing with outlaws added to the show's appeal, making it a must-watch for fans of the genre. Beyond its original airing, the series left a lasting impact on Western television. It influenced future shows, shaping the way Westerns were portrayed on screen. Its innovative storytelling and visual style contributed to its cultural significance, ensuring its place in television history. In summary, the television series from the late 1950s, featuring a bounty hunter as its protagonist, remains relevant today due to its engaging narrative, memorable characters, and lasting influence on the Western genre. It continues to be appreciated by audiences, showcasing its enduring appeal. Steve McQueen, the lead actor in the series, was posthumously honored with the Warren Zevon Tribute Award in 2012 by the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization. He was also profiled in Back in the Saddle essays on Western film and television actors, edited by Gary Yagi in 1998. McQueen's cremation was followed by a memorial service at his home, featuring a biplane flyover by his flying buddies. The Hollywood Wax Museum had to temporarily store his wax statue due to the abundance of flowers and cards from his fans, which were placed there to honor him. John Daner, known for his role in Wanted Dead or Alive, had a multilingual upbringing, attending grammar school in Norway and France, mastering four languages. Faye Spain, another actor from the series, was recognized as one of the YMPA's baby stars of 1956, chosen by a panel that included Ginger Rogers. Steve McQueen, whose notable role was in Wanted Dead or Alive, delivered his final on-screen lines in The Hunter, saying God bless you before his passing. Their diverse backgrounds and talents contributed to the show's success. In the late 1950s, a popular TV series debuted with the lead character played by Steve McQueen. The actor, known for his serious demeanor, had a significant moment in his career when he turned down a role in a famous sci-fi movie in 1977 because he didn't want to play emotionally driven characters. According to the A&E biography profile, McQueen chose to take on the lead role in the TV series due to a slowdown in his movie career. As the show gained traction, so did McQueen's recognition in Hollywood. Director John Sturges, impressed by McQueen's talent in a war film, later cast him in a successful Western movie. This marked a turning point for McQueen, launching him into stardom. Another actor associated with the TV series had a notable departure from a different project due to billing disputes. These insights into behind-the-scenes dynamics shed light on the complexities of the entertainment industry during that time. It's fascinating to see how McQueen's role in the TV series paved the way for his later success on the big screen. In the world of entertainment, some people really leave their mark. Take Anthony Caruso, for example. He was known for doing lots of voiceovers and commercials. People loved his voice because it was so unique and expressive. And then there's Everett Sloan. Even though he passed away, his last TV appearance on Honey West with Anne Francis was memorable. Lastly, Steve McQueen really liked playing Lieutenant Frank Bullet in Bullet. He thought it was his best role ever. These stories show how these actors made a big impact on the entertainment world. In the realm of television's Wanted Dead or Alive, James Coburn faced severe rheumatoid arthritis, which afflicted him until his passing in 22. His struggle with the disease left his body deformed and in constant pain. Despite this, he continued working sporadically, trying various treatments for two decades with no success. At age 68, he discovered MSM, a sulfur compound which alleviated his pain significantly, enabling him to move more freely and return to his career. John Daner, another figure associated with the series, auditioned multiple times for the role of Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke, but turned it down to avoid being typecast as a cowboy. 
William Schaller, who also appeared in Wanted Dead or Alive, featured in several films directed by Joe Dante, including Twilight Zone, the movie, Gremlins, Interspace, Matinee, and the Second Civil War. In August 1940, Dick Foran found himself in a scuffle with two sheriff's deputies over a drunk driving incident. Despite losing the encounter, he paid his fine and was released. William Phipps, under the tutelage of Charles Lawton, learned about vocal inflection techniques through Billy Holiday Records. Steve McQueen was the first actor to transition from television stardom to becoming a major movie star. It's a testament to his talent and charisma. Throughout their careers, Warren Oates, Steve Brody, and James Coburn all made significant impacts in the entertainment industry. Despite facing various challenges, they each carved out unique paths and left lasting impressions on audiences. Warren Oates, for instance, often played supporting roles, but stood out in films like Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia and Cockfighter. Steve Brody, inspired by a daring figure from history, took on a new identity that reflected his adventurous spirit. Meanwhile, James Coburn's journey from studying acting to sharing experiences with peers like James Dean shaped his approach to the craft. These actors may have had different journeys, but their contributions to film and television were memorable and continue to be celebrated by audiences today. In the world of entertainment, some memorable things happened to certain people. After becoming successful, Steve McQueen started a company called Scuderia Condor Enterprises, which later became Solar Productions, Inc. Warren Oates wanted his ashes to be spread on his Montana ranch after he passed away. The famous Mare's Leg, a gun created by Kenny Howard, was made in collaboration with McQueen and became well-known in movies. In the 1960s, Steve McQueen publicly threatened to break Howard Hughes' nose if he did not stop harassing Mamie Van Doren, a woman both men had affairs with, but at different times. Needless to say, Hughes never bothered Van Doren again. In Once Upon a Time in the West, Woody Strode used the sawed-down Winchester model Weddy A92 rifle, Mare's Leg as his weapon at the opening duel in a tribute to the Western series. Barry Kelly's gruff, authoritarian face is on the many political posters seen on the walls of streets in West Side Story. Everett Sloan received a Hollywood Walk of Fame honor in 1960. His star is located at 6254 Hollywood Boulevard. Steve McQueen, known for his role in the series, smoked marijuana almost daily and used cocaine in the early 1970s. He was also a heavy cigarette smoker. McQueen lived next door to James Garner in Los Angeles. Despite occasional disagreements, they often had neighborly barbecues together with their families. In 1973, Steve McQueen flew to England for a potential film collaboration with Oliver Reed. During their meeting, Reed, known for his excessive drinking, took McQueen to his favorite London nightclub. The night took a turn when Reed, in a sudden and unexpected moment, vomited on McQueen's shirt and trousers. Despite the staff providing new clothes, McQueen spent the remainder of the night with the lingering smell of Oliver Reed's sickness. Warren Oates, another notable figure from the TV series, met an unfortunate end. He passed away in his sleep due to a sudden heart attack while taking an afternoon nap at home. Oates' autopsy revealed chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and chronic emphysema attributed to years of chain smoking on and off camera. These health issues likely contributed to his fatal heart attack. Oates had been battling influenza for about two weeks before his untimely death. Steve McQueen, aside from his role in the series, was considered for Charlton Heston's part in Planet of the Apes, showcasing the actor's potential involvement in other significant projects during his career. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes and unfortunate events shed light on the personal and professional lives of the individuals associated with the series, revealing the challenges they faced outside the realm of wanted dead or alive. William Phipps discussed the show in Tom Weaver's book's attack of the monster movie makers and a sci-fi swarm in Horror Horde. Casey Rogers is interred at Forest Lawn Memorial Park. James Coburn battled severe rheumatoid arthritis from 1979 onwards until a holistic healer introduced him to a dietary supplement in 1998, resulting in significant improvement. Josh Randall, a character in the TV series Wanted Dead or Alive, was portrayed as a war veteran who served in the Confederate Army during the Civil War. This aspect of his background added depth to the character, providing a glimpse into his past and shaping his identity. In a separate context, Steve McQueen, known for his role in the series, made a notable lifestyle change before filming Tom Horn in 1980. He decided to quit smoking cigarettes, and the somewhat squashed appearance he exhibited during that time was attributed to a crash diet. McQueen's commitment to such changes reflected his dedication to his craft. 
Jimmy Lidham, another figure associated with the series, shared insights into his experiences. While directed by Victor Fleming and Joan of Arc, Lidon expressed reservations about Fleming's working method as a director in an interview with film critic Leonard Maltin. This behind-the-scenes perspective sheds light on the dynamics within the industry during that era. These behind-the-scenes details offer a glimpse into the lives and choices of those associated with the series. The personal and professional anecdotes of the cast members contribute to the broader narrative of wanted dead or alive, enriching the viewer's understanding of the show's context and the people involved. A Winchester Model 1892 Mirror's Leg Rifle, akin to the one used in Wanted Dead or Alive, is wielded by a robot villain in Westworld. This firearm, though modified, closely resembles the one Steve McQueen carried in the series. McQueen's pivotal role in Never So Few was initially slated for Sammy Davis Jr. yet, a fallout with Frank Sinatra led to McQueen stepping into the part, marking his breakthrough. Colin Farrell's character in SWAT has a poster of McQueen's bullet in his apartment, reflecting Farrell's admiration for McQueen as an actor. In the 1958 TV series, one of the lead actors, chosen as one of the 100 sexiest stars in film history, ranked 19 in 1995 by Empire Magazine. Another actor from the series, Warren Oates, contributed his vocals to Chris Christopherson's album, Who's to Bless? Who's to Blame in 1975? Interestingly, the same lead actor was considered by Warner Brothers for a role in Deliverance in 1972, but he declined the offer. Throughout history, many people have achieved success in various fields, whether it's beauty contests, acting, or motorsports. Sometimes opportunities arise, but individuals may have to pass them up due to prior commitments. Despite this, their achievements and recognition continue to grow. For instance, in 1947, Gloria Talbot won the Miss Glendale Beauty Contest, kickstarting her journey in entertainment. Similarly, in 1978, Steve McQueen was honored in the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame, alongside his neighbor James Garner, both known for their work in movies and TV. These stories show the different paths people take and the recognition they receive along the way. After his triumph in Wanted Dead or Alive, Steve McQueen declined leading parts in The Victors and King Rat to avoid being pigeonholed in war films. Later, following the massive success of The Towering Inferno, he introduced an unconventional payment arrangement for his roles, insisting on one $5 million up front along with the script and an additional one $5 million upon acceptance. James Coburn, another actor from the same series, was considered for a role in Star Trek's pilot episode. This strategy not only solidified his reputation as a formidable actor, but also reshaped industry norms. The legacy of his strategic decisions continues to influence Hollywood practices today. This brief insight into McQueen's career trajectory underscores the calculated risks and bold moves that ultimately propelled him to stardom. In the world of entertainment, there are some actors who stand out for their unique contributions. One such actor was Virginia Gregg, who often played supporting roles in police dramas like Dragnet. She was highly valued by Jack Webb, the creator of the series. Another notable figure was Casey Rogers, remembered for her role as the caustic estranged wife in Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. Her performance added a special touch to the movie's story. Then there's Steve McQueen, a famous actor who decided to retire from acting despite declining roles in films like The Missouri Breaks and Islands in the Stream. These actors each brought something different to the table in the entertainment world. In June 1986, something memorable happened in Hollywood. A star was added to the Hollywood Walk of Fame to honor someone special. This person was known for being in movies like Wanted Dead or Alive. Before becoming an actor, they were also in the Marine Corps during World War II, showing how brave they were. There was a time in 1972 when this person almost got a big role in a movie called The Godfather. They were considered for the part of Tom Hagen, but didn't end up getting it. Even though they missed out on that role, they kept acting in other movies and became famous for it. Their story is inspiring because it shows how talent and determination can help you achieve your dreams. This person's name is still remembered in the history of movies, proving how much they influenced the world of entertainment. In the world of classic TV, there's a show that left a lasting impression. It had a strong cast, including John Daner, who rests in Carpinteria, California Cemetery. Another actor considered was James Coburn, but Richard Farnsworth got the role instead. Steve McQueen played a bounty hunter in one episode of Trackdown, with Robert Culp as a Texas Ranger. The show was called Wanted Dead or Alive, and it became really popular for its exciting story and interesting characters. Steve McQueen became a big name in westerns, inspiring many actors and filmmakers. 
Wanted Dead or Alive still holds up today, showing how timeless classic TV can be. On March 24, Steve McQueen was born, coincidentally sharing his birthday with a significant World War II event. This interesting fact added another layer to the life of the well-known actor. Steve McQueen made a name for himself, not just because of his birthday, but through his remarkable career in the film industry. In 1978, he was recognized for his love of off-road motorsports and was inducted into the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. His ability to take on different roles showcased his talent, and he was praised for his performances. In one memorable scene from The Wonder Boys, Tobey Maguire acknowledged Everett Sloan's skill, reminding viewers of McQueen's impressive career. Despite his early passing, Steve McQueen's influence on film remained strong, making him a legend in cinematic history. His work continues to inspire audiences worldwide, proving that his impact transcends time. This acknowledgement of his varied talent serves as a reminder of his lasting influence on the industry. Rebellious as a teenager, Steve McQueen, whose troubled relationship with his stepfather led to multiple thefts, found a turning point in his life when his parents placed him in the California Junior Republic for boys at Chino in 1944. He later acknowledged this experience as the best thing that happened, claiming it straightened him out. Before her acting career, Virginia Gregg showcased her musical talent by playing the bass viola with the Pasadena Symphony. She was also a member of the Singing Strings before transitioning to radio drama. Dabbs Greer's foray into the film industry began as an extra in the 1938 movie Jesse James, filmed primarily in Pineville. Recalling the experience in 22, Greer noted the substantial $5 per day payment to local extras, emphasizing the financial significance it held at that time. These actors, each with unique backgrounds and diverse paths, converged in the 1958 TV series, contributing to its overall appeal and success. James Coburn cited his portrayal of Pat Garrett in Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid as his favorite performance. The mayor's leg weapon, carried by the protagonist Josh Randall, is a cut-down Winchester Model 188-92 carbine in 4440 caliber. Interestingly, the bullets in his cartridge belt are 4570 caliber rounds, larger than those used in the carbine. The producers opted for these visually striking bullets, although they were historically inaccurate for the weapon. Furthermore, the series is set in the 1870s, yet the Winchester model winning a 92 carbine itself is an anachronism. William Phipps, another actor in the series, served in the Navy during World War II. In the world of classic westerns, there's a fascinating tale of actors whose connections went beyond just what you saw on screen. Take, for instance, the story of a famous actor known for his charm and talent. He was considered for a different role in a well-known movie, showcasing his versatility. Later, he was honored posthumously for his work in westerns, showing how much he meant to the genre. Another actor from the same series had a family tied to someone behind the scenes, giving us a glimpse into the personal connections that shaped the entertainment industry. Overall, the actors from this series left a lasting impression on western cinema, whether through their performances or their relationships. The movie they could have been in, with its memorable cast and complex story, still holds a special place in Western film history. It's a story of connections, talent, and the enduring appeal of classic Westerns. And it goes to show how these actors left their mark on the industry they loved. In the world of entertainment, there are stories of people making their way to the top. Take, for example, an English actress named Casey Rogers. She was inspired by a famous American TV show from 1958 when choosing her stage name. Rogers didn't just stop at her name change, she went on to do some memorable work in the industry, leaving a lasting impact. Then there's Steve McQueen, a big name from that same TV series. He wasn't a regular at the Oscars, only showing up twice. Once in 1964 to hand out an award for Best Sound, and then again the next year with Claudia Cardinale doing the same thing. Even though he didn't show up often, McQueen's presence at the Oscars showed how influential he was in movies. On March 21, 1967, just before turning 37, McQueen did something special. He left his handprints and footprints at Grauman's Chinese Theater, a famous spot in Hollywood where stars leave their mark. It was a way of saying, I'm here to stay in the entertainment world. These stories connect different people from that classic TV series to their later successes in showbiz, showing how one thing led to another. Steve McQueen, renowned for his roles in various films, was also a skilled off-road racer, participating in races such as the Baja 1000 and the Mint 400. He shared the screen with Eli Wallach in both his debut success, The Magnificent Seven, and his final film, The Hunter. 
Everett Sloan, the eldest of three siblings, hailed from a Jewish family with roots in New York City and Boston. His father, Nathaniel Isidore Sloan, worked as an insurance broker and cotton merchant, while his mother, Rose Gerstein, came from Boston. Steve McQueen, known for his role in Wanted Dead or Alive, performed a daring stunt in Papillon, where he leaped off a cliff, describing it as one of his most exhilarating experiences. Later, McQueen made headlines by accepting the lead role in Taipan for an unprecedented $10 million, receiving $1 million up front. Unfortunately, his health declined, and he passed away before production could commence. The film was eventually released six years after his death, starring Brian Brown. Meanwhile, Mike Raggin, a makeup artist on the show, returned to full-time work on TV shows in the early 1970s. William Shallert, along with Warren Kenner, appeared in both In the Heat of the Night and its 1988 counterpart. John Daner had roles in six films in one year, including a small but significant part in Carousel as Mr. Bascom. Steve McQueen had disputes with neighbors, including a feud with British rocker Keith Moon over a bathroom light and a four-year grudge against James Garner for winning a lead role. Back in 1958, a popular TV series hit the screens, leaving a lasting impression on entertainment. Fast forward to August 14, 2020, and a special day was dedicated to honoring one of the stars of that series. This acknowledgement speaks volumes about his impact. Interestingly, a notable figure in the industry once thought about casting him in a role for a movie, which eventually went to someone else. This shows the range of talent that was recognized in him. Similarly, another well-known actor was once considered for a role in a famous movie, but ended up not getting it. This highlights the tough decisions casting directors had to make. These stories give us a peek into the fascinating connections between talent and casting decisions during that time in entertainment history. In the past, there were some really talented actors who worked together to make a popular TV show. One actor, Edgar Buchanan, had a favorite role in a movie called Texas. Another actor, Barry Kelly, became famous in Hollywood after a director named Ilya Kazan brought him there in 1947. Then there's Steve McQueen, who acted in three movies with his friend Don Gordon Bullitt, Poppy Hume, and The Towering Inferno. People loved watching them on screen together because they had great chemistry. All these actors made the TV show Wanted Dead or Alive really special. Their hard work and talent made the show loved by many people for a long time. It's amazing to see how talented they were. In the late 1950s, creators faced resistance selling a TV series centered on bounty hunters due to the negative portrayal of such characters in Western shows and movies. To overcome this, the series Wanted Dead or Alive introduced Josh Randall, the bounty hunter, who devotes most, if not all, of his earnings to help families affected by the criminals he brings in. This twist in character development made Randall more sympathetic and likable to the audience. Steve McQueen, a prominent actor in the series, left a lasting impact on the industry. Kevin Costner, a well-known actor himself, considers McQueen his favorite and primary influence. McQueen's influence extended beyond his time on Wanted Dead or Alive, shaping the approach of future actors in the industry. Tragically, Steve McQueen's life took a downturn during the filming of Tom Horn in 1980. Diagnosed with mesothelioma, a condition often linked to shipbuilding and construction industries, McQueen faced a grim reality. Despite being a heavy smoker, his illness was not smoking related. McQueen pointed to his marine service and film career where asbestos exposure was likely. He underwent surgery in a Mexican clinic for controversial apricot pit therapy banned in the United States to remove tumors. Unfortunately, he succumbed to consecutive heart attacks less than 24 hours later, marking the end of a significant era in television and film. Ever heard about an actor who decided not to watch his movie after his co-star passed away? It's a story that shows how actors can feel when something sad happens during filming. Imagine being really into acting and then having someone you work with die. It can be really hard. Now, let me tell you about another interesting story. Did you know a famous actor once appeared in a small, cheap movie without anyone noticing? It's like they snuck into a movie without anyone seeing. This shows that actors can do different kinds of movies, not just big ones everyone knows about. And here's another cool fact, there was an actor who played the same character on both the radio and TV. They were good at acting in different ways, showing how talented they were. These stories are like peeking behind the scenes of showbiz. They show that actors have feelings, can surprise us, and are really good at what they do. It's like discovering hidden layers to the world of movies and TV. So, as we learn about these stories, we get a glimpse into what it's like for actors when the cameras aren't rolling. These tales remind us that showbiz isn't just about glitz and glam, 
It's about real people facing real challenges, and that's what makes it interesting. In a world filled with unique characters, some really stand out. One person's story inspired a beautiful song that connects deeply with people. Another character comes from both Scottish and Norwegian backgrounds, adding a lot of interesting cultural stuff to the story. And there's this other person who gives super interesting interviews, making the whole thing feel real and authentic. All of them together make the story way more interesting and diverse. Their stories, inspired by music, heritage, and interviews, make the whole thing feel alive and real. Warren Oates starred in Wanted Dead or Alive. He appeared in five films recognized by the Library of Congress for their cultural significance Ride the High Country, In the Heat of the Night, The Wild Bunch, Two Lane Blacktop, and Badlands. William Schaller, who played a role in the series, served as president of Screen Actors Guild from 1979 to 1981. Edgar Buchanan, another actor in the show, acted in 13 movies alongside Glenn Ford, including My Son is Guilty, Texas, and Lust for Gold. Buchanan's collaboration with Ford spanned several years and productions. These actors contributed significantly to the series and the broader landscape of film and television. In considering Tony Curtis' role in Black Commando, James Coburn emerged as a potential candidate. Earlier in his career, John Daner pursued various roles, including serving as a musical director and band leader. Despite initially studying art, acting became Daner's profession, even working as an assistant animator at Disney due to family connections. Coburn, alongside his co-star Steve McQueen, paid respects to Bruce Lee, serving as pallbearers at his funeral in 1973. Their bond extended beyond the screen, reflecting camaraderie beyond their roles on Wanted Dead or Alive. William Schaller, recipient of the 1971 OBIE Award for Distinguished Performance for the trial of Catonsville Nine Off Broadway in New York City, showcased his talent beyond Wanted Dead or Alive. Steve McQueen, known for his role in the series, was once considered for Gregory Peck's part in McKenna's Gold. In 1973, the Rolling Stones referenced McQueen in their song Star Star from the album Goat's Head Soup, with McQueen reportedly granting personal permission for the lyrics. These instances highlight the diverse careers of the actors beyond the show's success. In one instance, Dick Foran portrayed John Hubbard's father in The Mummy's Tomb, despite being just four years his senior. Meanwhile, Steve McQueen shared the screen with James Coburn in three films, The Magnificent Seven, Hell is for Heroes, and The Great Escape. On another note, Casey Rogers, recognized for her red hair, initially donned a black bouffant wig for Bewitched to mirror Irene Vernon's portrayal of Louise Tate. Over time, however, she shed the wig as her character solidified. In the late 1950s, a popular TV series captivated audiences with its compelling storytelling and memorable characters. One of the actors in the series faced personal challenges in relationships, including difficult moments with partners. These struggles reflected the complexities of their personal lives off-screen. Additionally, another member of the cast had a familial connection to the entertainment industry, enriching the show with a sense of heritage and tradition. Beyond the small screen, another actor made significant contributions to cinema, with several of his films being recognized for their cultural impact. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a deeper understanding of the series and the lives of its cast members. Directed only once by Everett Sloan, a Broadway show entitled The Dancer in 1946. Produced by George Abbott, it ran only five performances. The King of Cool Steve McQueen became a born-again Christian shortly before he died, influenced by his third wife Barbara Minty and his flying instructor Sammy Mason. He went through Bible studies with Reverend Billy Graham. Interestingly, this conversion happened before he was diagnosed with cancer, indicating its likely genuineness. His favorite Bible verse was John 3.16, which reads, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Quigley Down Under was written for McQueen in the 1970s. In the TV series from the late 50s, one of the actors had a scholarship named after him at the University of Louisville. Another actor from the same show missed out on roles in some well-known movies due to salary disputes. Despite this, he eventually landed a part in a film by the same director. Additionally, one of the actors had a highly publicized divorce trial in the 1940s, which added to the drama surrounding their personal life. These anecdotes give us a peek into the experiences of the actors behind the scenes of that TV series. Everett Sloan, known for his role in Wanted Dead or Alive, was born to Nathaniel Isidore Sloan and Rosie Gerstein. Interestingly, he shared his birthday with his Citizen Kane co-star George Coolerus. On the other hand, Steve McQueen had a memorable encounter with Martin Landau. 
Despite Landau not recalling meeting McQueen, the latter recounted a peculiar incident where Landau was on the back of James Dean's motorcycle when it was brought in for repairs in New York City, with McQueen as the mechanic. Quite the small world. In the old days of Hollywood, there was a talented actor named Tom Drake. He became famous for playing the love interest in Meet Me in St. Louis alongside Judy Garland. After World War II though, he found it tough to keep his career going strong. Still, he left a lasting impression on classic movies, which many people still remember today. Another actor from that era was William Schaller. Besides acting, he also looked out for other actors as the president of the Screen Actors Guild. He was great at playing many different roles, and even after he passed away, his work and advocacy efforts continued to be appreciated in the entertainment world. Then there's Steve McQueen, who was known for his tough guy roles. He was almost cast in a part that later went to Al Pacino. But McQueen's own performances were so good that he became an iconic figure in Hollywood history, loved by audiences everywhere. That's the story of these actors who made their mark on the big screen, leaving behind a legacy that's still remembered today. In the world of entertainment, there's a fascinating web of connections that often stretch beyond what meets the eye. Take, for example, a certain iconic TV series from the late 1950s. One of its stars, known for his rugged charm, had a close brush with a major rally event in 1970. He was set to join a racing team, but had to pass due to prior commitments to the film industry. Another familiar face from the same series had a knack for appearing in various renditions of a popular sci-fi show, showcasing his versatility across different eras of television. Interestingly, the lead actor, besides his on-screen exploits, had a fervent passion for off-road motorcycle racing. He often rode a particular model during these thrilling races, emphasizing his love for adventure beyond the silver screen. These snippets offer a glimpse into the multifaceted lives of those associated with the series, revealing their diverse interests and pursuits. In 1958, Wanted Dead or Alive hit the screens, captivating audiences with its gripping tales. Interestingly, William Schaller, a familiar face in the series, resided in Pacific Palisades, sharing a neighborhood with notable figures like Mel Blanc and Walter Matthau. Meanwhile, Steve McQueen, another key player, almost found himself in a different role, as he was considered for a part in Two for the Road. Barry Kelly, on the other hand, owned his craft at Chicago's Goodman Theater before joining the cast. Each actor brought their own unique background to the show, enriching its narrative with their diverse experiences. Steve McQueen, born to Julian, and William Terence McQueen had a diverse ancestry, including Scottish, English, Scots, Irish, Northern Irish, German, Cornish, Dutch, and Welsh roots. Raised by his grandparents, Lillian and Victor Lee Crawford, McQueen's tumultuous teenage years saw him frequently running away from home, taking up jobs on ships as an oil field laborer, and even working as a fairground barker. He spent five years in a California reformatory. Despite this troubled past, he had a younger paternal half-sister named Terry McQueen, whom he never had the chance to meet. Gloria Talbot, sister to Lori Talbot, also played a significant role in the series. Notable for her familial connection, Talbot added a layer of familial connection to the show. A distinctive aspect of Steve McQueen's preferences emerged as he did not appreciate gratuitous violence, swearing, or nudity in movies. This personal stance shaped his approach to acting, influencing the roles he took on during his career. Incorporating these personal details about the lead actor, Steve McQueen, and the familial connection with Gloria Talbot provides a glimpse into the backgrounds of the individuals involved in the Wanted Dead or Alive series. These personal elements contribute to the broader context of the show's production and the dynamics between its key cast members. In the world of TV and movies, there's always more than meets the eye. Take, for instance, the story of a well-known actor who, back in the day, was up for a role that another famous actor eventually landed. This actor, trained in martial arts by some of the best in the business, including Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee, showed his skills both on and off the screen. Another actor from the same series made waves not just for his acting chops, but also for his work behind the scenes, leading his radio station to a big award for their coverage of an important event. These tales shed light on the talents and pursuits of the actors from that classic show, proving they were a force to be reckoned with. In the world of entertainment, collaborations can lead to some unexpected gems. For example, James Coburn and Lindsay DePaul teamed up to create two touching songs for her album Tigers and Fireflies. Meanwhile, Anthony Caruso took on the role of the last president of the Maskers Club, a prestigious group in showbiz that started back in 1928 but later disbanded. When Steve McQueen felt unsure about his part in The Great Escape, he took a break. 
but thanks to the encouragement from James Coburn and James Garner, he returned to the set, realizing the importance of the film's success for everyone involved. The Great Escape became one of McQueen's most memorable roles, showing how persuasive his co-stars could be. In the series, Dabbs Greer had multiple appearances. He portrayed an uncredited character saved by Superman in the debut episode of The Adventures of Superman. Later, he returned for a significant role as an innocent man facing the electric chair in the first episode of the second season. Greer made another appearance towards the end of the series, showcasing his versatility across episodes. Faye Spain, who initially pursued higher education, diverted her path to acting after winning a scholarship, but only completed a year before heading to New York to pursue her passion. James Coburn, with his striking appearance, became an icon in Japan, even representing a leading cigarette brand. His post-acting ventures included exporting rare automobiles to Japan. Each actor brought their own unique flair to the series, contributing to its overall appeal. Steve McQueen, admired by Colin Farrell, Kevin Costner, Pierce Brosnan, and Bruce Willis, served as their hero and inspiration in acting. Virginia Gregg, one of the busiest radio actors of her time, showcased remarkable versatility across various shows like Dragnet and The Lone Ranger, akin to William Conrad, Ben Wright, and Elliot Lewis. Everett Sloan, a graduate of Townsend Harris Hall High School in New York, began his journey in acting after leaving the University of Pennsylvania in 1927 to join a stock company led by Jasper Dieter. In the world of movies and planes, there were three interesting people, Mike Ragan, Everett Sloan, and Steve McQueen. Mike Ragan started working at MGM in Los Angeles after growing up in San Francisco. Everett Sloan, who worked a lot with Orson Welles, had a problem while making Othello. Even though Wells gave him his first movie part, Sloan left the set because of too many delays. He was replaced by someone else, causing bad feelings between Sloan and Wells that lasted even after Sloan died. Steve McQueen loved planes and owned and flew a few of them, like a 1945 Stearman, a 1946 Piper J3 Cub, and a 1931 Pitcairn Pa 8 Bip. He kept his planes at Santa Paula Airport near Hollywood. These three guys all had different paths in Hollywood, in aviation, adding interesting stories to their fields. In old Western movies and TV shows, Gloria Talbot was really good at riding horses. She looked super confident whenever she got on a horse and did cool tricks like jumping onto the saddle smoothly. This showed how much she practiced and how dedicated she was. After Steve McQueen became famous for his role in a TV series, he turned down big roles in other cop movies. He didn't want to keep playing the same kind of character all the time. He wanted to play different roles and not get stuck doing just one thing. In one movie called The Magnificent Seven, a character named Vin Tanner uses a special kind of rifle. This rifle was a nod to another show where Steve McQueen's character also used it. Another actor, Eric Close, played the same character in the movie, showing respect for Steve McQueen's famous role. Back in the late 1950s, there was a popular TV series that introduced a young actor named Steve McQueen to audiences. Before becoming an actor, McQueen served in the Marine Corps and was praised for his bravery. Despite some trouble during his time in the military, McQueen later pursued acting, studying in New York. Another actor from the same show, William Schaller, became known for appearing in both science fiction shows set in small spaces and those set in outer space. McQueen was the first of the original cast of The Magnificent Seven to pass away, leaving behind a lasting impact in Hollywood. In Catlow, Leonard Nimoy portrays a bounty hunter wielding a Winchester model 1892 Mare's leg rifle, paying homage to the Western series where Steve McQueen's bounty hunter also used it as his primary weapon. Barry Kelly, a heavy set actor, excelled in playing tough Hollywood characters. Faye Spain faced legal action in 1963 when producer Albert Zugsmith sued her and others for alleged defamation during the production of The Great Space Adventure in the Philippine Islands. She and co-star George Nader were accused of conspiring to slander Zugsmith, resulting in derogatory articles in Manila newspapers. In 1958, a television series aired featuring Wanted Dead or Alive. Gloria Talbot, known for her role in the series, had a daughter named Mi Mullally. Mullally showed promise as an ice skater, winning three gold medals in local competitions. Later, she pursued acting. Jimmy Lidon, as mentioned in the Encyclopedia of Feature Players of Hollywood, shared insights about the industry. Talbot, on the brink of a recurring role in Mr. Novak, encountered an injury before filming, leading to her replacement. Talbot's aspirations and setbacks offered glimpses into the world behind the screen. In an unexpected encounter, a famous actor once pitched an idea to a well-known playwright. 
Surprisingly, the playwright didn't recognize the actor. Despite this, the actor had made a big name for himself in movies like The Magnificent Seven and Bullet. What's interesting is how the actor's journey began after high school. He joined the Marines for two years. He worked on planes and even became a corporal. This mix of military life and later fame shows how versatile and determined he was. His experiences surely added depth to his acting. 